Hi, my name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of our church for September the 18th, 2022. Per usual, we will sing several songs, we will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short message for you that I hope will be both edifying and uplifting. We sing from songs of faith and praise, so I will give you the number from our book. I'll give you the title so that you have a different book or you can Google it so that you can sing along with us. Uh, you may do so. And so the first song we are going to sing is entitled More Holiness Give Me. In our book, it is page 681. 681. More Holiness Give Me. <clears throat> more holiness give me more strivings within more patience in suffering more sorrow for sin more faith in my savior more sense of his care more joy in his service, more purpose in prayer, more gratitude give me, more trust in the Lord, more pride in his glory, more hope in his word. More tears for his sorrow, more sense of his grief, more meekness and trial, more praise for relief, more purity give me, more strength to overcome. More freedom from earth stains, more longings for home, more fit for the kingdom, more useful I'd be, more blessed and holy, more savior like thee. And if you would turn to number 540, the title of this song is O oh, For a Faith That Will Not Shrink. 540. Five, four, zero. O oh, For a Faith That Will Not Shrink. <clears throat> Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every fall, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly wall, that will not murmur or complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain will lean upon its God. A faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without. That when in danger knows no fear, in darkness feels no doubt. Lord, give us such a faith as this, and then whatever may come, we'll taste in them the hallowed bliss. Of an eternal home. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee, number 7, 
63. O Master, let me walk with thee. Number 7, 63. Excuse me. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lonely paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil. The fret of care. Help me, the slow of heart, to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way, what feet to stay. And guide them in the homeward way, in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way. In peace that only Thou canst give, O oh, Thee, O oh, Master, let me live. At this time in our service, we do what we are supposed to do on the first day of the week, and that is to um, observe the Lord's Supper that Jesus instituted on the night that he was betrayed. Uh, there are so many implications that we have in observing this Lord's Supper. Um, it is one of our ways, kind of as the title of this last song uh, indicates, it's our way of walking with our master. Uh, we know that uh, Jesus came into this world as the son of God, but also as the son of man, and he came in human form. That means he was susceptible to every temptation that man could be susceptible to. And he was also uh, susceptible to pain. Uh, we know that uh, in your divine plan that Jesus came, that he uh, dwelt with us. And then finally, uh, as uh, God had ordained, that uh, he would become the perfect sacrifice for each one of us. And as that perfect sacrifice, uh, the covenants changed from the old covenant to the new covenant. And the new covenant was that which was guided by Jesus Christ. And so as we gather about the table, uh, let's remember the work that Jesus did on the cross and why he did it. Let's first pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was not just willing to leave your right hand in, in heaven, but that he was willing to take human form and walk upon the earth. Uh, we know his teachings were magnificent. We know that he was able to perform miracles, but we also know that he felt everything that all humans felt. And uh, he allowed himself uh, to be nailed to the cross as we partake of this bread Help us to remember the agony that he felt as uh, those nails went through his hands and his feet and that sword pierced his side. Be with us as we partake. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's give thanks for the innocent blood that Jesus shed for us. We know that this fruit of the vine uh, means to us that your son uh, allowed the life-giving blood to flow from his body, the precious blood, the blood that has power, the blood that allowed grace uh, to come over us, the blood that washes away our sins. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, help us to remember all of that and all that it entails 
We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We are also instructed on the first day of the week to lay by in store that which with with which we have been prospered. And uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, the church, uh, your kingdom uh, here on earth has a mission. It is to go out into all the world and preach the good news. We pray that these monies will be uh, allocated for that purpose, that we can be a beneficial and a benevolent church and help those that are in need. Let's pray as we give. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that not only do we have the ability to give, but we have the desire to give back to you, knowing that all good and perfect gifts have come from you uh, in the first place. We know that we give thee but thine own. We give you back what was yours, and we give you back uh, as a as a token of our love for you, that your church might grow, and those less fortunate than us may be helped. Uh, be with us as we give. Help us to give with an open heart, with a, an opened mind, and generously, as we know that God loves a cheerful giver. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the song before the lesson is a familiar one to all of you. It is called God is So Good. Number 83, God is So Good. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. I hope all of you were able to sing along with us. Uh, I know that we're uplifted by the singing of these songs, that uh, it's what we are uh, told to do. Uh, moreover, we know that the Lord has do his praise and uh, we just uh, want to give him his praise any chance that we can get. If you attended this morning, uh, you knew that uh, the title of my lesson this evening is Are You Hungry? Are You Hungry? Uh, what does it mean when we say, no thanks, I'm not hungry? Well, you know, it can mean one of a couple of things. Uh, it can mean that we're so full from what we've eaten that uh, we don't want any more. And so if we're eating out and the uh, the server comes up to you, up to us and says, are you ready for some dessert? Uh, we say, <laughs> no, I'm not hungry. Uh, probably a wise thing to do. But I'm going to go into the deeper implications of what hunger is all about. We do need food to nourish our bodies. Now, all of us that have been parents uh, and have had children know that their hunger 
is a natural part of their life, especially in the very, very beginning. Consider how we would react if a baby, a very, very young baby, suddenly stopped wanting to eat. Now, immediately, the, the alarms would go off. Immediately, if that child's innate desire to eat, it is an instinctual thing. And if that stops, we would immediately know that something was wrong. We, we know that if the baby stops eating and he does this, he or she does this for a prolonged period of time, something serious is going on. And we know that the longer that baby goes without proper food, the harder sometimes it is to get them to start eating again. And so lack of hunger is something, uh, it is a signal that something is not right for our child. And as parents, we immediately jump into action. We try to resolve the issue. We don't ignore it. And if it goes on, we consult our doctor. Uh, we we go to get help. Um, we address the problem and we do everything that we can to get that child to eat again. Now, many of us maybe can call to memory if we are parents, uh, you know, if we're older parents like us, we have to stretch our memory back many, many years. We can remember the relief that we got when a sick child finally started to eat again. It was a sign for us. It was a sign that said, our child is getting better. And hearing that child say, oh, mom, oh, dad, I'm hungry. It's like, it's like music to our ears. Uh, after being sick, it's joy to our hearts. And we immediately get them something to eat because food is vital. Now, how about if this happens to us as adults? Well, you know what? It's, it's exactly the same, isn't it? Oftentimes, we stop eating when we get sick or we are about to become sick. And very often, our lack of hunger, and by the way, even though even our, our lack of thirst is a sign of a bigger problem to our health. And if left unaddressed, just as it was with our little baby, the conditions can become dire. Uh, we know what food is all about. We know food is the nourishment that goes into our bodies. In the digestive, in the ingestion, in the digestion uh, processes, uh, we know that these foods are broken down into the necess necessary nutrients for growth, for energy, for everything that uh, is what our physical life is all about. It's why all of this is able to transpire. And if we go for a period of time without sustaining that through the eating of food, uh, we know that uh, we might have trouble fighting off the illnesses in our bodies because we don't have the necessary strength that this nourishment brings to us. Now, 
the, 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 the horrible thing here is, is as adults and not babies, with the baby, it's instinctual. With an adult, it becomes intellectual. We certainly know as adults, if uh, we don't eat, we know that uh, when we say, no thanks, I'm not hungry, that we know we should eat, but we just don't want to. We know that if we don't eat, we can become sicker and sicker. And then it can be hard for us to turn this around and make ourselves eat something to sustain our bodies so that we can recover and get our normal appetite back. Remember, just as with the baby, food is vital. So with that, let's hearken back to the title of my lesson this evening that asked the question, are we hungry? With that, and with that thought in mind, I am going to try to make an application here that I hope is, is useful to all of us. Do we respond with the same concern as we would physically about not eating? Do we respond with the same concern and the same urgency when we lose our spiritual appetite? This is serious. Spiritual food is vital. Do we recognize our lack of appetite for God's word? And do we recognize that is that it is a, a symbol of potential spiritual illness? We do not want to become spiritually ill. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the fourth uh, chapter of Mark and in the fourth verse, when Satan said you could turn these stones because Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, the devil said you can, you can turn these rocks into food. No problema. You know, you're the son of God. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Are we hungry? for the spiritual bread that comes from God? If we're not, right? If we're not, we are addressing our, you know, we'll ask the question, are we addressing the problem or are we ignoring it? Now we know what we did with that baby. You know, we got worried we consulted the experts. We did everything we could to get that baby back eating it. We did not ignore that because the very physical life of our child was in our hands. Scripture often compares newborns. If we look at first Peter chapter two and verse two, uh, often uh, compares newborns that we talked about just a moment ago with this problem. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, it says, Like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow into salvation. Those are, are wonderful words that, that kind of stir us up. They, they talk about our hunger. They talk about our hunger for, for spiritual food. But there's also an expectation. There's an expectation that we will grow from this elementary physical food to food that is more substantial. All right? 
uh, as babies, we need that milk. We need that food that's almost digested already. But as we grow older and our bodies mature, we're able to take in more complex food. You probably remember that with your baby, the first time you fed him some oat cereal or something of that nature. They were ready for something more substantial. And so as we, as we look at this, um, if we aren't hungry, for the food that we need, how are we going to grow? Now, the Hebrew writer kind of addresses this in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, where he says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have the need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. See, it, it knew that as young Christians, we needed the milk. We needed to get started with the elementary principles of God's word and what he wanted us to do with that. But here's what we know. Just as with physical hunger... If we don't eat, our spiritual sicknesses can get worse. With that, we've got to go to the doctor. All right? We've got to go to the doctor. You see, the Hebrew writer said, he said that here's where it is. It's in the Lord's word. The Lord's word uh, as we increase in knowledge is such that this is what we need to ward off spiritual sickness. We don't want to be spiritually sick. And moreover, we don't want to be spiritually stagnant. Right? Now, you know what? We, we all struggle just a little bit in this. Uh, it seems as though uh, in our current culture, Christians very often crave everything but the food that can sustain their spiritual lives. Do you know what junk food is? Junk food is food that's very, very high in caloric value, but very low in nutritional value. I can eat a Milky Way that has some uh, 300 and some odd calories in it. But what's what physical sustenance am I going to get from that? The main ingredients in that are sugar. The body breaks down sugar very, very, very quickly. And after that, there's literally nothing left. However, when we eat either the vegetables or the meat or uh, the, the, the foods that we are, are supposed to eat, the body breaks them down. And there are things in that, not just carbohydrates, but there are proteins and there are fats that the body needs to regulate itself. And so this is what it means when we are to de delve deeper in the word when we are to grow in knowledge, as Peter addressed in Second Peter, the first chapter, when he said, add to your knowledge, it starts with our knowledge. It starts with our understanding. And as we, as we grow in knowledge, we become more spiritually mature. We grow spiritually. Now, uh, problems, come when people kind of turn off the spiritual food spigot, so to speak. Maybe some folks have gone too long without taking in the spiritual food that they need. And then you get to the point that you lose your appetite for it. 
the, your Bible becomes, you know, a, 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 a coffee table book, you know, uh, a book that, you know, we, we only pick up every once in a while. And with that, we will not grow spiritually. What we do know that if we lack getting into God's word, a spiritual problem will develop just like a physical problem will develop if we don't take food into our bodies. And if we don't get into God's word, the spiritual nourishment that we need will lead us down the roads that we don't want to go down. However, when we get back into the word, <laughs> we get back to the road of recovery. It's like being sick and recovering from the illness. Part of that recovery is our bodies uh, taking in what's necessary to get that recovery going. Now, we can fight off these spiritual diseases we can fight off the spiritual diseases and sin and get our spiritual health back if we get back into the Lord's word. If we go from the milk to the foods that are more complex because our bodies are now growing and they need those more complex things. As we are growing spiritually, we need the more complex parts of the Lord's word to grow and to mature. I hope that this message has resonated with you a little bit and uh, you can take it with you and think about it a little bit and uh, ask yourself those hunger questions. Compare physical hunger with spiritual hunger and see what road it takes you down. I pray this evening that all of you had started your Christian walk. If not, I am going to offer you that invitation to come to the Lord, that invitation that comes with understanding what the Lord wants us to do with our life of turning our faith and our belief into obedience. That is the obedience of knowing that we must confess Jesus as the Son of God. We must repent of our former ways, and we must be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you are uh, in need of that, uh, we're a phone call away. We will be there to help you in any way that we can. Let's all pray together as we close. Our God and Heavenly Father, I pray that you would uh, be with us as Christians and help us to understand our, our need to be spiritually strong. Our physical bodies will one day wear down and what will be left is the spiritual part of us. As we are created in the image of the Lord, we know that we are created in that spiritual image. We want our spirits to soar when we breathe our last breath, we know that we want our souls to, revive, to, to reside with you in the place that you prepared for us. Bless us as we get into your word, as we attempt to grow spiritually and become more like Jesus in our lives. We know that we stray from time to time. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins. And know that through the blood of Jesus, that is possible. Be with us through the evening. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Believe in me, oh.